Nestled between the Waitakere Ranges and Manukau Harbour is Auckland's greatest golf course. Originally situated in One Tree Hill, Titirangi Golf Club has been around for over a hundred years, but in 1919 the club moved to its current location in New Lynn. And eight years later, an aspiring course architect by the name of Alistair McKenzie was asked to redesign the course. What he created not only paved the way for one of New Zealand's best courses, but also Dr McKenzie's career. He's one of many designers to have, I think it's four courses in the top 20 in the world. Uh, and there's no modern day designers that have managed to get into the top 20 in the world. So he's kind of portrayed as a legend of golf architecture and any of his golf courses are living art. With a, a number of the designs McKenzie did, he was very brief. He'd walk the golf course, draw up plans, and then come back and, I guess, empower one of the green staff to implement those designs. A couple of things that McKenzie worked really hard on was having the course look like it was meant to be there, so it was really natural. So the, the bunkers, for example, uh, have quite a sort of rustic or rugged look to them, and the bold contours on the greens. Uh, the greens were never meant to be at the speed that they are today. Back in, say, the 1930s, the greens were a lot slower, so it made it more entertainment value than, than stress value. The strong association with Alistair McKenzie means Titarangi is among an elite group of courses from around the world. We're actually part of the McKenzie Society, which is uh, 15 McKenzie courses from around the world, have a, have a meeting and a golf event every year. Uh, we host it therefore once every 15 years, but we go to all the other courses. There are a lot of contacts through that association. We get visitors from their courses. Anyone visiting New Zealand, uh, rightly they might well look at Queenstown or some of our great new resort courses. But if they're coming through Auckland, inevitably Titirangi may well end up on their list. With such prestige, the course has hosted a number of professional tournaments with golfers such as former world number one Greg Norman and Mark O'Meara giving their praise to this unique layout. In more recent years, Titirangi has undergone restoration to bring Alistair McKenzie's vision back to life. What you see today is a typical West Auckland surrounding with lush native bush and tall, mature trees. The setting is very tranquil. It's a lovely sort of native bush-like setting. Actually, when Mackenzie came through, there was no bush here, so it's naturally grown up over the years, and it, it's very much a part of the iconic Titirangi golf course. If it's your first time coming to Titirangi, don't expect to post a good number. I'm not saying it's not impossible to do so, but appreciate the challenge of, of the shots that are presented to you and the options and difficulty that the greens also offer. To get us started, the course tour. Doug takes us to the tricky par four third. Uh, the third hole is probably one of my favourites out there uh, and the reason why I like it is a par or birdie is definitely well earned. Uh, firstly, you've got a, a fairway bunker on the left about 200 metres out that you have to navigate whether you elect to go around it or go over it. Uh, so that's the, the first puzzle you're left with and then you have a, a second shot to a, the smaller screen on the course that it's all carried to get to it over a gully. The trick with that second shot is trying to pick that wind and if you do that correctly then you can get yourself on the green to give you I guess a couple of putts for a, a par. With it being one of our smaller screens, it's also one of our most undulating, so you can have a putt of, say, 15 feet that could break about six foot in total. Two holes later, and we come across the longest par five on the course. Uh, the fifth hole's one of two par fives on the golf course. You tend to feel you can make a birdie there, but uh, there's times where you get tripped up and get yourself out of position and, and write a slightly bigger number than you're anticipating. But the trick there is, uh, if you do get a good tee shot away, your approach has to favour the left-hand side. The green is probably friendlier in the front half, and if any time there's a flag there, it's probably a flatter putt and a slightly easier approach. When the flag is down the back portion of the green, then you can get yourself out of position quite easily and end up riding down that big score that I spoke about earlier. On the back nine, we come across another par five, nicknamed the Wrecker. Probably the most iconic hole at Titirangi is our 13th hole, the par 5, where you tee off over a, a ravine and it's to a fairway that you can't see from the tee, so that tee shot is seemingly more difficult than what it is. So once you get down to your tee ball, there's a tree 
position just over the other side of a gully, that tends to dictate how you play your second shot. If you're far enough left or far enough back, then it's pretty straightforward. You can go around it or over it. But uh, if it's too close and you find yourself having to hit a short iron, it's probably one of our more severe greens. And again, if you're not uh, alert as to where you're putting your approach, then you can walk away with the three putts quite comfortably. There's a number of times you'll be entering scorecards for members or visitors, and uh, a round is seemingly ruined by a, a big number on that hole. So, um, yeah, don't take it lightly. To close out our tour, we come to the par for 15th. Originally, that's uh, what they call a cape style hole. So the cape hole is where you can elect as the player how much of the dog leg you wish to take on. So in this case, you're hitting over a ravine. So the safer option is playing out to the right. Or if you want to challenge the dog leg, you'd take it uh, further to the left, which gives you a greater carry over the ravine and also some trees to tend with. The second shot plays slightly downhill to a two level green with the first level being higher and then the second level being lower at the back. So any time the flag is at the front of that green, it's probably the, the harder of the, the pin placements because you're having to really sort of play that approach shot precisely. While it's New Zealand's only Alistair McKenzie design, Titarangi doesn't share the same airs and graces you'd find at many other McKenzie courses around the world. Being in West Auckland, we have a great mix of members from whatever financial or other sort of background. That works well. Uh, it needs to work as a value for money sort of place for them. Nevertheless, it is a premier course. A tight-knit club with one of New Zealand's best golf courses, Titarangi is definitely a national treasure. I guess the thing that I enjoy most about Titarangi is, is the friends and, and the camaraderie within the club. I have a lot of people I would say are close friends and it's a nice thing to, to have been a, a staff member. With regards to the course itself, it never plays the same two days in a row based on the pin placement, the wind or where you happen to hit your ball. And for that reason alone, that, that's why I love playing here and I wish I could get out and play more often.